Oops. Hi, everybody, and welcome to um, iPhones Tips and Tricks. This crazy screen will go away in just a second. Um, I am going to be sharing with you um, my iPhone screen. Um, while we're getting going here, um, I would like before we start, if anybody has anything that they would like to learn about specifically, um, to please type it into chat. And then that way, if I get to the end and we didn't hit on it, that we can wrap back around to that, okay? We are going to be touching on a number of things today. Um, and uh, first off, if you wanna know how I am doing this, I have joined uh, Zoom as a second participant and I'm sharing my iPhone screen as that participant. So if you would like to present something on your iPhone in a Zoom meeting, you just have to join as a secondary participant and share your screen. Um, that way you can have control of your meeting controls on a regular meeting as well as share your screen because once you're sharing your screen um, you cannot see anything else that's going on okay so now we're looking at my home screen of my iphone here so the first thing that we're going to touch on today um, is how to have a FaceTime conversation. Um, um, actually, before we get started, my name is Miria Gray and I'm the Community Education Officer here at Chelsea Groton Bank. And we are live in our Mystic branch today. So if you hear people chatting in the background or a little bit of noise, it's just because we are live um, at um, our Mystic branch, which has been newly remodeled with this beautiful uh, TV. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is how to have a FaceTime conversation. So if you want to have a call with somebody, for example, and you want to be able to see them because in COVID times right now, um, we haven't seen people sometimes for quite some time, right? Um, if you have an iPhone, iPhone comes with its own basically kind of Zoom uh, portal that's less about meetings and more about uh, friends hanging out. So um, you can um, use FaceTime. Now that is this app right here, this green one that looks very much like the Zoom app, which I have next to it right here, um, but it is FaceTime. Um, if you open up FaceTime, you're going to see a list of the people that you have FaceTimed with in the past. Um, and then, um, so if you can just tap one of those, if you just want to go off and, and speak to somebody that you normally would be speaking with. Um, to make a secondary call, so say you wanted to add somebody new to the conversation, um, you would just click the add button up here in the corner. Okay, we're not going to be able to do a FaceTime call here on my phone because I'm currently in the Zoom app, so I can't use another app, but um, you would start typing in the to field. Um, so you can start typing something and then, um, then they'll pull your contact information, um, from, uh, your, um, contacts. So, uh, you can pull up a contact that you already have in your contact field. If you want to add more than one person to a conversation, all you have to do is just add multiple people. So, um, Say I wanted to add my husband, for example. Um, I could add him. Then I have to guess which one is, is Josh because I apparently have three Joshes with three very different uh, numbers in my phone. Um, so I would add Josh Gray. Um, oh, but he doesn't have an iPhone. So uh, they'll tell you. So. Um, the blue ones are people that currently have iPhones in your field. They're the only ones that you're going to be able to talk to. If you scroll down here to somebody that perhaps does not have an iPhone, such as my husband, I cannot talk to him on FaceTime because uh, FaceTime is not an Android application. It's only proprietary to iPhones. So you can add 
maybe if I want to talk to Josh Kelly, for example, who is my contact at Junior Achievers, I could add him, I could add, um, say I want to have a conversation with him and the principal at the school that I worked at, I could add them both just by hitting um, Josh and then I add the plus sign again to add another person. Um, that'll bring multiple people into a conversation. You can have up to um, 12 or 15 people in an iPhone chat. Um, it's not great for business because you can't share your screen, but if you just want to be able to hang out with your friends and be able to see them, um, it's a great application to be able to use um, that comes free with your iPhone phone product um, and doesn't have time limits on it. So Zoom, for example, if you don't have a paid version, has a time limit of an hour if you're having a meeting with more than one person. Um, okay. So does anybody have questions about the FaceTime? It is gonna bring up people's faces. So you'll be, you would be able to see them on the call normally, which I just can't show you because I'm using multiple applications already on my phone. Um, okay, so um, the next thing we're going to talk about um, is a problem that I have sometimes is that I keep my phone on silent all the time, right? But for example, um, I have parents that are aging. What would happen if something went wrong with them, my phone was on silent and they wanted to get in touch with me at 2 a.m. and I didn't get the call because my phone was on silent. So a good functionality that is um, in iPhones, is if you go under your phone application, which is um, kind of down here, it looks like the phone, um, it says the number of voicemails, but if you go underneath your contacts, okay, and then it will bring up your list of contacts. So for example, um, I want to um, we'll look at my mom's contact, for example, my mom is Sheila Morgan, um, she has an iPhone, so um, if I hit edit up here at the top, it's going to allow me to make changes to this contact. Um, if I scroll down right here, you can say ringtone is default. So if I click on that, it'll let me change what my mom's ringtone is. So I could make it a more emergency tone if I wanted to, I could give her something special, so that if my ringer's on, I know that it's her that's calling. So let's just say we're gonna give her some chime. Okay, so it will give you an example of what that sounds like. But then if I scroll back up to the rest of the top, you'll see that it says emergency bypass. Okay, emergency bypass, if I hit the little button and turn it to green, it allows sounds and vibrations from this person even when the ring switch is set to silent or when do not disturb is on. So if I'm sleeping in the middle of the night and my ringer is on silent and I want to make sure that if my mother has an emergency, she can get through to me, um, only her number will ring through. So if I get other calls in the middle of the night from telemarketers or whoever it might be, um, those won't go through, those will stay on silent, only hers will ring through. So I have this turned on for my kids, I have it turned on for my parents, um, and anybody else that you'd wanna get a call from at any time. Um, so it's a great, um, one thing to be aware of is your phone will ring through at any time, whether you're in a meeting, whether you're, you know, so if you're in a very important meeting and you do not want your phone ringing, Make sure to tell your kids, for example, if you have them on um, bypass, that you're going to be in a meeting and not to disturb you for the next hour or so, or you know your husband or wife or partner or whatever it is, um, you know that you're you just can't be talking to them for an hour, or you can just toggle it off. So it's easy enough to toggle on and off. You just go into their contact and hit the button and turn it on and off. Um, it's, it's a really good feature if you want to be able to have somebody ring through no matter what. Mary, we have a question. Yes. Does the user you choose um, to bypass have to be a smartphone user? No. So 
you're only bypassing the number. So as long as they're in your contacts, when they come up, um, it, they don't have to be an iPhone user. Um, they will bypass if it's an Android user or whatever their phone is. Um, it can be a landline. It does not have to be a cell phone. So for example, if um, you know that one, this one happens to be my mom's cell phone, but I could set it up for their landline also. So it doesn't even have to be a cell phone. It's just the phone number or the contact that's coming through. Okay. So, you know, if you have, um, you know, a parent that is at a nursing home or in the hospital and you want to be able to hear from the doctor at any time, that would be a great um, thing to toggle on. But you do have to set them up as a contact. So you can't just say um, Yale New Haven Hospital or LNM, for example. You'd have to, it's going to be the specific number. So um, you'd have to find out the specific number in that case. All right. So um, one of the new, if, does anybody have any other questions about that? It's just a really great uh, feature, especially as your kids get older and um, they're driving or whatever it might be. Um, one of the other problems that sometimes we have is um, we're uh, at a location. You come into the bank, for example, um, and uh, we ask you to look at some paperwork. Um, and you have forgotten your glasses at home um, because you need some readers, right? So, um, and your bank doesn't have any readers to offer you. Um, iPhone has a magnifier. So basically it's using your camera as a magnifier. And I'm trying, probably making you all busy. But what you can do is place it over something and then you use a little slider to make everything bigger. Um, if you have um, a, a vision impairment or um, say you're colorblind or you have something of that situation, you can change um, the, the background colors of it. You can change the brightness level of it. Um, you can take a picture of it. So now I've taken a picture of this document with the settings that I had chosen. Um, and then I can do that. Say, for example, um, I can see better when something is a yellow background with black writing. Sometimes black and white is really um, hard on the eyes for some people. Um, you can make it a black background with white writing. So you can change the contrast of the image. I'm sorry if I'm making people dizzy. Um, but it's um, a really great feature. We can make it Chelsea purple. Um, and uh, so um, this is really great if you have um, a, a vision issue, if colors bother you, if you need text to be bigger. Um, and, and if you want to save what you're doing, I can take a picture of it looking exactly like this. Um, and it will save the, it as I have recolored it versus as the black and white version. Um, and then, for example, if I've recolored it and um, I want to share it with somebody, you can click this little button up here at the top that looks like the box with the arrow coming out of it. And I can send it to somebody. So I can text it to somebody by just hitting this button. I can send it to a contact that I have recently been talking with. So um, for example, if you're somewhere and you're talking with somebody and they want you to sign a contract, you can use the magnifier to read the contract. You can sign the contract. You can take a picture of the contract with your signature on it, and then you can save it and email it to the destination or for somebody else to review. So that's a really great feature. Um, you can, you know, send it via your email just by tapping the mail button. Or you can just save the image to your phone. You can assign it to a contact. 
You can print it if you like, but there's lots of different options that you can do. And um, the way to get to this, if it's not on your homepage, is an easy search. Um, if you right swipe from your home screen, so if I right swipe, um, it's going to give me um, you know, some information. It's gonna show some apps. So I can just start typing what I want. So I start typing magnifier and it will search my phone for anything that has that name on it. So it's gonna come up with the app. You can touch it right there and it will open the app for you, okay? All right, does anybody have any questions on that? Okay. Um, okay, so one of the other things is um, we're in meetings a lot now. Um, and if we want to be alerted um, that we're getting a call or if we have a hearing impairment, um, we can make our phones flash when we're getting a text message or a call through. So it, uh, it works with your camera flash. Um, and when you get a text message or a call through, the flash will start um, going. I would not recommend this if you have a seizure disorder or something like that because it's very bright and very fast. But if you have um, an audio, uh, auditory issue, um, or if you just need to keep your phone on silent, but you want to know, for example, um, if somebody called, this would also be great at night. Um, you can um, go into your settings. So your settings is this one right here that looks like a gear, right? Um, and then you're going to go down to accessibility. And there's a lot of accessibility features with this. So accessibility is this one right here. It's a blue icon with a little man in a circle. So you're, you're gonna touch that. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different um, things that we can do. We can have, use spoken content. We can do motion uh, text display size. So um, if your eyes are going and you do need something a little bit bigger, you can change the display text size. So if it looks really small to you, you could change that. <laughs> um, but if you go down um, on your um, thing and you click into audio visual, which is, it looks like the little um, volume button over at the top of an eye, you can click on that, okay? So down here at the bottom, you will see LED flash for alerts, okay? So you can turn that on. If you don't want it to flash when it's on silent, you can turn that off. So if, <laughs> for example, you're in a meeting and you don't want bright lights flashing, you can turn that off. But if you're going to be in that meeting and you want, and you're waiting for a call, for example, from somebody, an important call, but you don't necessarily want it to ring through because that's disturbing, um, you can just have your phone flash. Um, so that's helpful. And you can turn it on and off as needed. It's just as e easy as toggling the button to on and off, okay? There are some, um, there are some other accommodations in here. There's headphone accommodations. So you can customize the audio for supported Apple and Beats headphones. So if, if you're using um, those for, for audio reasons, you need them to be a little bit more advanced, you can go into that setting um, and you can set up your custom audio setup. So for example, um, if you have no hearing in your right ear, so you don't want, don't need the sounds playing out of that, um, you can um, rebalance everything. So um, I don't need that, so I'm gonna turn it off so I'm not confused um, when, <laughs> next time I plug in headphones. Um, so does anybody have any questions about the flash for texts or rings? Well, before I move on. No, okay, and these are just some things that I've identified through other classes that people ask for a lot. 
So if I'm going through and, and you're thinking of things as I'm going, please feel free to type it into chat and we'll make sure to get to it at the end, okay? All right, um, so you can um, store passwords on your iPhone. So this isn't going to work for me because um, my audio right now is being taken up by Zoom. But um, for example, your iPhone stores passwords for you, right? So anytime you say you wanna save that password, say you've saved your um, Facebook password on your phone and now you're at a location where you need to hop on a laptop or a desktop and you log into Facebook and you don't remember what your Facebook password is. You can say, hey Siri, show me my passwords. Um, and Siri is not operational right now because I'm using the audio for something else. But if you did, it would pop up um, a list of the apps on your phone that you have stored the passwords for. Now, it's not gonna show you what the password is until you put in your password. So um, my recommendation is because this is a feature on the phone, please set strong passwords for your phone. Don't set them as something that anybody can guess because um, you know, don't make it your birthday, for example, or you know, don't like put your, your password as your screensaver because you always forget what it is. So like those things will enable people to um, get into your phone. So don't do it if you haven't set a password for your phone. Um, it'll ask for your iTunes password. Um, so if you're always forgetting what that is, um, it's important to kind of remember that. A lot of people do forget what their iTunes password is because now um, we don't necessarily use it as much now with um, thumbprint recognition or fingerprint recognition and face recognition. We don't always have to put it in all the time. So, um, you know, chances are that you may not uh, remember what it is. Um, I use a password app for my phone. Um, it's right here, it's called Keeper. If you do do that, do not use a free application because they have no reason to be um, storing your information safely. Um, it's worth it to you, I'm sure, you know, $15, $20, whatever it is to pay for the application to make sure that the passwords that you're keeping in it are secure, okay? Um, so um, if, if you wanna do that, that's great, um, but make sure that when you're doing that, you're not using a free application. Um, uh, I don't know if anybody out there has AirPods, but if you lose your AirPods, you can ask Siri to find your AirPods. So you can say, hey Siri, find my AirPods. Um, if your AirPods have been previously connected to your phone, meaning that they're yours, um, Siri will find them for you. You can then, it, Siri will ask you if you would like to play a very loud noise, which will help you locate them if they've fallen in the couch cushions or underneath or the couch or have fallen off the seat of your car or whatever it is. Um, I had somebody that was delivering groceries one day and lost her AirPod out of her ear into the grass. So, and she had black AirPods, not white ones, which was a nightmare to try and find. So um, you can ask Siri to find your headphones. Um, one thing that I will recommend, Siri is going to make, say, um, are you sure that somebody does not have them in their ears? And you need to confirm that before you do it because you can really hurt somebody's, when I say that the sound that they make them play is loud, it's very loud. And if somebody has them in their ears, um, it's going to hurt. So make sure your kids haven't stolen them uh, prior to um, alerting the AirPods that they're missing. All right, so you can also screen your calls. Um, I don't do this only because um, I work remotely at home um, from the bank most days and my calls are forwarded from my work phone to my cell phone. 
So I do get a large number of calls that are not in my contacts. But um, if that is not the case for you, um, if you're tired of getting those spam um, likely calls, um, if you're tired of hearing from uh, the person that wants to sell you a new roof or your auto warranty, um, you can screen your calls. So what you're going to do is go back into settings and then you are going to go to your phone, which is the picture of a phone, I believe, right down here. It's buried, so it's the picture of the phone, okay? And then you can silence unknown callers. So I could, if I could toggle that on. So this calls from unknown numbers will be silenced, sent to voicemail, and displayed on the recents list. Um, incoming calls will continue to ring from people in your contacts. So as long as the person's in your contacts for some reason or another, it will continue to ring through, but anything else that's spam likely or is just a number is going to go straight to voicemail. So that may be helpful for many people. Um, I can't um, necessarily do that. So the other thing that I use quite frequently is respond with text. So you can set this up to be whatever you want. So say somebody is calling me while I am on another Zoom call and I just want to tell them that please call me later or send me an email um, or you know whatever it might be. Um, you can change any of these to whatever you want. So um, it's saying, sorry, I can't talk right now, but you could just say, I will call you right back. Okay. And then, so you can change it to be whatever it is that you would normally respond with as a text message. Um, this pops up when somebody calls you and you haven't answered your phone. If they're calling from an iPhone, it asks if you'd like to respond with a text. So um, you can, th these options will then pop up when you hit respond with text. So you can change them to be whatever you would like, um, which is helpful um, if, if that is something that you want. I used it this morning because somebody called during um, a Zoom, while well, I was on another Zoom meeting and I know that she had been trying to call me for a couple of days and we just kept missing each other. So I just sent her the text and I said, I'm on a Zoom meeting, you know, I'll call you right back. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? Okay. Um, all right. So uh, you can scan a QR code with your camera. So um, we often see, and I didn't happen to grab one, um, uh, but I think Barb is going to find me a flyer with a QR code on it. So um, you see a flyer that has a QR code. Thank you, Barb. And a QR code is one of these jobbers right here. See if I can get it a little bit closer. Oops, I've now completely wrecked the sign. Okay, there. So it's this, this right here, that little square that has all the dots in it. So that's a QR code. And basically it contains information and it will send you to a website. Ours says, scan the QR to register or see um, ways to update on our, uh, or to see an always up-to-date list of our events. So. The way you have to do that used to be that you had to have a whole separate app for that and you download an app to your phone to scan QR codes, but you don't have to do that anymore. Now, all you have to do is open your camera button. Okay, so I'm ready. Now we're all looking at 10,000 versions of the screen. Um, you position it over the QR code. It automatically reads it and pops it up says, do you want to open it in Safari? And I just say yes. And now this will take you to our um, website with our list of classes. So you can see what's up to date, what we're offering, and you can register from here. So that's helpful um, if you're in marketing. 
Um, if you're doing events and you want people to be able to go direct to your registration, um, if you want to give them some, some information, or if you want to be able to see where any of these QR codes are going to. Um, they have them on the back of Heinz ketchup bottles. So, um, you know, check it out, find one, try it out. All right. Does anybody have any questions about that? It's, it is really just that easy. You just have to open your camera and, and hover it over the QR code and, and your phone does the rest. Okay. Um, all right. So you can set a sleep timer. So I know a lot of people maybe listen to music or a podcast when they're going to bed. Um, but you don't necessarily want the music or the podcast to play all night long. Um, so you can set a sleep timer for that. So you go into your clock, right? So you're going to then, um, there's several options, which you can't see because it's cut down at the bottom, but you can see a world clock, which tells you times. You can set an alarm. So if, if you want to wake up, um, there's a stopwatch, so you know if if you're like I need to do this for the next ten minutes, or um, you're timing how long it takes you to do something. And the last one is timer. Okay, so say that when you go to bed, you know it normally takes you about twenty minutes to fall asleep, and you like to listen to an audio book or your favorite podcast or what whatever it is, and, you, and your podcast is an hour long, and you know you don't want to miss you know, the whole end of it because you fell asleep after the first 15 minutes. So you tell your sleep timer, okay, I'd like it to be for 20 minutes. Now, I can just hit start and go and that'll time 20 minutes for me. But what do we want it to do when it ends? So I'm gonna go ahead and touch that button. So um, I can choose the noise it makes when it ends. But if I don't want to do that, I can scroll all the way to the bottom and choose stop playing. So at that time, when 20 minutes is up, whatever my phone happens to be playing at that time, it's going to stop it. So I can listen to an audiobook, I can listen to my podcast, I can listen to music, and in 20 minutes it will shut itself off. So that's um, really helpful for all of those people um you know who want to do that all right does anybody have any questions about that where to find it it's it, it is really just that easy and you'll have to do it every night though it's not something that you can set up to be automatic so when you turn your thing on just go into the timer and and set it up all right so i have used this application this next application quite frequently in the last um month We've been switching our house around to make a home office space. And so we've been moving things around and I was putting up some wallpaper and we're putting up shelves and we use the measure app. All right, so here's my measure app. So the first thing that we can do, if I switch it over, I have a level. So if if I want to find out how level something is, all I have to do is lay my cell phone on top of it. And then when I hit zero, it'll tell me I'm good and I can know it's level. So if I want to hang a shelf or something else, I'm good to go. But the one thing that I love is when I want to hang holiday lights, for example, and I'm like, I'm going to order 50 feet of holiday lights. And my husband says to me, are you sure we only need 50 feet of holiday lights? Maybe we only need 35. Maybe we need 75. How much? But I don't want to go out with a tape measure and start on one end of my house and go to the other end of my house. The other option in the measure app is measure. So what this is going to do, I don't know if you can see it, but it is going to open for me my camera. And I don't know if you can see right in the middle, there's a circle with a dot. <clears throat> so if I'm gonna measure the top of this, I'm gonna add point. Now, I'm going to come along this with my camera. I'm gonna come to the other side and I'm going to add point. And it's going to tell me 
in the middle that it's eight feet two inches from that side to this side. I do not need to carry a tape measure around in my pocket. <laughs> um, I don't have to need two people to do anything because I need somebody on the end over there to hold one end while I walk eight feet to the other end. So I can do it myself. <clears throat> um, it'll give you directions if you're too far away to move closer and things along that line. But I think that is probably one of the most handy things on our phone. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so on your application, I don't know if anybody knows, but every single time that you open a tab on your phone, it opens a new tab. And if you don't close those tabs, you end up with 9 billion tabs open on your iPhone. Mary, can yes. you just answer how did you get to the measure app? Oh, okay. Sorry, I will absolutely back up to that. <laughs> um, I don't like to search around for things on my phone because I have a tendency to bury apps in folders. So I just swipe right and start typing measure. And I type M-E-A-S and it pops up the measure app for me. <coughs> if that is, uh, makes sense. And I'm just gonna grab a water. Does anybody else have any other questions while I'm? All right. Okay, so um, so if we go into um, our app, our Safari app, down along the bottom, and I'm sorry that you can't uh, see it because it's kind of cut off by the zoom, <clears throat> there's a double set of boxes. Um, it looks like two squares stacked on top of each other. If you type, touch that, it will pop open <coughs> um, everything every app that you've ever had, okay? So um, when I do that, um, you can close individual tabs on their own by just clicking the X, okay? That'll close one tab. And that's great if you have three tabs open, but I have way more than three tabs open. So instead of just touching that box down there, if I hold it, it says, do you want to close all 24 tabs? And I say, yeah. So I touch that. It's going to ask me again to make sure that I want to close all 24 tabs because sometimes we have things open because we want to go back to them, right? We've been working on a form and we want to be able to go back to it or whatever it is. So I'm just going to say, yeah, go ahead. All right. And so that closes then all of my open tabs without me having to individually close everyone. All right, does anybody have any questions about that? No, okay. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is, um, this is great for um, a work or school or with your kids. We're gonna be able to talk about how to scan documents using your iPhone. So um, you could get a scanner out and you can pay for it, um, but um, your phone already has the built-in capabilities to scan a document. So it's in our notes application, okay? So we, we pop open our notes application. You can see here, I have scanned a document in. This was a contract for uh, fireworks for the Norwich Harbor. So, um, but if we go back to notes, um, so we have, you know, clearly a whole bunch of notes here. We're going to add a new note, which is down here at the bottom. It's a square that looks like it has a pencil in it. Okay. Um, and then we're, this is going to pop up this fresh screen here. What we're going to do is touch our camera button. Okay. So it's going to ask us what we want to do with our camera. Do we want to choose a photo or a video from the documents we have on our phone? Do we want to take a photo or a video, or do we want to scan documents? So I'm going to say we'd like to scan some documents. All right. So now we just hover over our document. When we think we've got it in the place where we want, um, it will take the picture for us. 
Um, if you get it there, for example, you, and you hit save, okay, it will, it'll pop it in there for you. Um, you can, uh, you can't see it here, but on the bottom, it's asking me, do I want to add more pages? Do I want to crop it? So for example, if it came crooked, I can recrop it. So if, because I've got it on a white countertop here, the phone doesn't recognize the edges of the paper correctly, I can, I can say, oh, that's not right. And I can fix it by readjusting the corners, okay? The iPhone actually does a really good job about identifying the edges for you. Um, but if not, you could absolutely just readjust it. When you're done and you like what it is, all you do is say done and it pops up like this, okay? You can rotate it if you want. So say you've scanned it and realized it's backwards, upside down or whatever it is, you can rotate it. Um, you can recolor it. So um, for example, we were talking about, you know, um, people that have uh, visual impairments where it makes them hard to see things. Um, right now you could choose black and white, which will make the back whiter and the text darker. Um, we could turn it back into the photo if we wanted to, or we can leave it as color. Um, it, this will come as a color document. This happens to be a black and white document of just my notes on what I wanted to talk to you about today. But if you had a color document that had color images in it, it would scan it in color for you, okay? And then you can tell it what you'd like to do with this document now. So you can tap this little button up here. The best thing about this is, is you can choose markup. Say this was a contract that I needed to sign before I sent it to somebody. I can choose markup, right? I'm going to choose my black pen. I'm going to choose the level of um, heaviness that I want the pen. I don't want it to be very heavy because this is a small document and I'm going to be signing it with my finger. So we want to make sure that um, it's not uh, blurry. And now I can sign my document, okay? So you can add a signature to anything. And then when you're done, you can undo it if you want, just by, by hitting that button. You, there's an eraser function here. You could sign it in blue ink if you want. Um, some, depending upon who you're going through, some contracts require you to sign things in blue. You can absolutely do that. Um, so <clears throat> say I want to just change the color, um, I could do that also, right? And then I'm just going to say done up here at the top when I'm done and it's going to save my signature on that document. Now I can hit this box again and I can email it off to whomever I want. Um, and it's going to email it off as a PDF to them. Okay, so it won't come across as, as a JPEG image. It'll, it'll send it off as a PDF. So you would just type in whoever you need to send it to, give it a subject, and send it on its way. This is super great for um, if you're trying to work remotely, um, you're trying to get things done, and you're not having to scan things into your printer, print them out, sign them, and then scan them back in. You can do it all from your phone. Then you can just I'm gonna delete that, say I'm done, and I'm gonna hop out of there. Okay. Maria, um, we had a question. Absolutely. How do you set up um, favorite apps? How do you set up favorite apps like to appear at the bottom? Or I think that might be, or, or there are multiple options maybe to appear at the bottom. And then we could also do maybe a building a folder of apps. Sure. All right. So um, here's my home screen. If I scroll through, I have lots and lots of apps on my phone, right? Um, but um, the ones I use the most are down here at the bottom of this screen. So that this line appears on every screen of your phone, um, no matter what else is there. 
you can change that now. So if you hold your finger down on your home screen, it'll make all of your applications do a little wiggle, okay? So say I wanted to um, take out my email app from down here and put that back on the home screen, but I was using um, Facebook a lot, so I wanted to remove that down here, okay? I can do that just by dragging them once they're in that wiggle mode. Um, be careful not to hit the minus sign because you'll delete it. Um, so for example, this one doesn't, if I do this, if I tap it accidentally, it's gonna ask me if I wanna delete it or remove it from my home screen. Um, so I'm just gonna cancel out of that, but it'll ask you first, but sometimes if you're not paying attention and you're tapping, tapping, you end up doing things and accidentally deleting things. So just be careful about that. Um, so you can you can absolutely move things around. So, I mean, oops, I don't use Facebook that much. So I'm gonna use move Facebook out and put my email back down at the bottom, okay? Um, but for example, I have here on my home screen, a share folder. So this is a folder that contains multiple apps. This is all of my Google apps. It's Google Maps, Google Chrome, Google Drive, Google Sheets, and Google Docs. Because for me, I don't need those to take up five application spaces on my home screen, but I do use them a lot, right? So if you want to combine two apps together, say I wanted to put my, my podcast and my music together in a music folder. I am going to make them dance again by holding my finger down on the home screen. I'm going to drag my music app on top of my podcast app and I'm going to hold it there until it pops it into a folder. Now, I might not want this folder to be titled music because um, it has podcasts in it, but um, I can change the name of the folder to whatever I want. So it could be listen. Um, and then it will pop in um, a folder for me. I like to use folders to keep things together so I'm not searching for them all the time. The app next to it is actually an education app. It has my son's high school, power school, my middle school's parent square, um, and then this application funds both of their lunch accounts. So um, rather than it taking up so much room um, on my screen, I just dump them all into a folder. Um, I use them all regular to regularly, so um, it's easier that way. Just, is that helpful? Did that answer the question? The other thing is if you wanna get them out again, make everything wiggle, you can pull it out. Um, and then, oops, sorry. You can pull it out, put it back on your home screen. And then if you pull them both out, that folder will then go away. And this will allow you to rearrange the apps on your phone too. So um, for example, on my home screen, I have things that I use frequently at the top, calendar, photos, clock, camera. And then these are the other things that I use frequently. And then on my back pages are things that I use less frequently. So one follow-up question was just how to stop and start the apps from wiggling. Okay, yep, absolutely. So all you have to do, if you want them to wiggle, and this is not going to work, I'll try and do a double. So you just hold your finger down on the screen. Just, you don't have to push it too hard. You just have to keep your finger touching the screen and they'll start to wiggle, okay? And then and to get them to stop, all you have to do is touch it again and they'll stop. Great. And then um, Mary, a couple of people have said this is great and very helpful and they're saying thank you. Um, and then there was also a question, can you make a scanned document in format to edit? Are we able to edit through your phone? So no. So once you've turned a scan document, the only thing that you can do with that is you could, um, you can, so let's look back at this one again. Um, 
if I tap it, it's going to allow me to do things to it. Um, I can mark it up, which is an option. If I scroll up, I can mark up. And that's going to pop open my options for me. So I could erase anything that I put on there, right? Um, but you can do some other things like add text. So if you wanted to make a note to somebody about something to change. So for example, if somebody sent you a PDF and you wanted them to change something about it, you could um, type text, you can edit the text and you can say, please oops, change to, um, you know, whatever it is to a different font or uh, or you could say there was a spelling error, please correct it, right? Okay, so um, then when you've got that done, um, clearly it takes up a lot of space, but I can um, change my font box and I can drag it around. So I could put it in an open area um with notes for somebody to change something um so unfortunately there's nothing that you can edit with this um it's kind of that interim piece but you might be able to get adobe pro as an app so if you have adobe pro currently on a desktop computer or something like that if adobe pro has an app you can probably sign in under the same user um, so that would be something that I would look into. I don't have that on my phone, but I would definitely look into that. Adobe has Photoshop apps. They've got all kinds of video editing apps. So you might be able to get your Adobe Pro as an app, which would enable you to make all those changes. Okay, does anybody else have any questions? So, um, uh, one of the other questions that came up last time um, that um, I ended up having to answer via text was um, somebody kept accidentally taking screenshots using the new iPhone 12, right? So the new iPhone 12, if you're looking at this, does not have a button down here. So on an older iPhone, to take a screenshot, you would hold down your finger on the button plus the power button and you take a screen snap. So somebody had said during my last class, listen, I got a new iPhone and I'm accidentally taking screenshots and I don't know why I'm doing that. So the reason that that could be happening is because without a button, the way to take a screen snap with an iPhone 12 is the power button plus the volume up button. So if you push those together, you take a screen snap of, you know, whatever you're looking at. Um, and so, for example, if we're having this class and I'm using the zoom on my phone and I'm holding my phone across it like this, um, you can accidentally hit both buttons at the same time. So um, if that is happening to you, that's probably why. <laughs> 